In this video, we'll go over the basics of CSS grid layout. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. We're going to go over the basic grid properties. If you're just starting or even thinking about starting a career in web development, you're in the right place. I upload new videos every week. Hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. And stick around to the end for some extras. I'll show you how to animate grids. If you watched my Flexbox video, you'll understand a lot of these concepts already. So if you didn't watch that one, be sure to watch it after this one. I'll put a link in the description and at the end of this video. It's important to learn Flexbox as well because Flexbox and Grid actually work very well when used together, as I'll demonstrate at the end. With Grid, it's easier to lay out websites without having to use floats and positioning. Grid is very powerful compared to Flexbox. Flexbox is for the most part one-dimensional. You can choose to flex either the row or the column. But Grid is two-dimensional, meaning it can handle both columns and rows at the same time. So let's look at some terminology before we get to the code. So with Grid, we have to have a container wrapping our Grid items. Now there are rows and columns in Grid, but they are defined by the lines. Now this part is one of the more complicated to understand. So I'll take a little bit of time to explain this one. And if you can wrap your head around this concept and understand it completely, then you'll be all set. So in the columns, there is line one, which is all the way on the left side, line two, line three, and line four. And the same with rows. Line one is all the way at the top, two, three, and four. So these lines are how we define the grid. So if we wanted this block to span two grid cells, we would have to tell grid to start at line one and end at line three. So we'll go over this in a bit. Just take a mental note here of how the lines are set up and we'll come back to this. So each block is a grid cell. And think of this like an Excel spreadsheet. So you have cells, we can also merge cells. So it's a very similar concept. And then in grid we have tracks. So there are rows and columns, but we call these tracks. So a track would be this entire bottom row would be a track. Uh, the middle column would be a track. And so just understand the terminology here. If you hear the word track, that's what it's referring to. It could be the entire row or the entire column. And lastly, we have areas. So we can define an area that consists of multiple grid cells. Now an area always has to be either a square or a rectangle. We can't have an odd shape like an L or anything like that in the current state of CSS grid. All right, now let's look at some code. So I've got some setup already. Just a basic HTML document, and in the body we have a div with the class grid container, and then we've got five grid items, and they're each individually named, item one, two, three, four, and five. In the styles, I've got some basic reset properties here. I've added a height and a border to the grid container, and some coloring and padding to the grid item, and nothing currently on the individual items. So to create a grid, the first thing that we'll need to do on our grid container is to display it as a grid. So we'll add display grid. And I'll save that. And you'll notice that it's somewhat changed, but basically it just stretched everything out. It's still laid out the same as it was. So the first thing that we should look at is defining our columns. So we can use grid template columns and we can type in any unit of measurement. We could use percentage, pixels. So let me just demonstrate that. Let's just do 200 pixels. We'll save that. And that creates one column 200 pixels wide. If I wanted two columns, I could do the same thing, 200 pixels, and that creates two columns. And I could add another 200 pixel column, and you'll notice that it's now going off the page. I do have this zoomed in, so that's why it's going off the page at only 600 pixels. So this may not be the best way using pixels. We could use percentage. We could say 20%, and that's a little bit better. So we should probably talk a little bit about explicit versus implicit values. So there are values that we can explicitly define, and then there are values that are automatic or implicit. So what we're doing here is we are explicitly defining the widths of the columns. And now you'll notice that we have more items here than columns. And so what it's doing is it's automatically wrapping those extra items down to the next row and applying the same column template to every subsequent row. So to better demonstrate that, let's use some different values here. Let's do 50 pixels, 
100, and 150. So now every row takes on this pattern for the columns. Now a better way to define this is using fractional units. So we can do 1FR, 1FR, and 1FR. And that takes a fraction of the available space and divides it equally if we have 1, 1, and 1. If I wanted the middle one to be 2, the middle column is now twice the size of the first and third column. Another unit that we could use is auto. So we could use a mixture. If we want the middle one to be 100 pixels always, one fraction at the beginning and then auto at the end. And then if we want all three to be the same, we could use repeat. And in repeat, it takes two values. The first value is how many times do you want to repeat? So we'll say three times. And then the second value is the size. So we'll say 1FR. So if we wanted 12 columns and all of them to be 1FR, uh, we don't have to type 1FR 12 times. We could just do repeat 12 1FR. Okay, so now if we want to define our row sizes, currently the rows are stretching to fill. We could use grid template rows. And here we can define our rows in the same manner as we do columns. So we could say 200 pixels, 200 pixels. Now we've explicitly defined that the first two rows are going to be 200 pixels. So now back to the explicit versus implicit values. We've explicitly defined the first two rows are going to be 200 pixels. Now what would happen if we had a third row? Let's change this. Let's bring this down to two columns. And let's see what happens when we have a third row. Now this third row is larger than the first two. To make it a little more apparent, let's change the first two to 100. So now you'll see the third row size is being automatically determined or implicitly defined. So now there is a way that we can predefine what any subsequent row should be. And that would be grid auto rows. And here we could say the first two rows, we want to be 100 pixels. But every row after that, we want to be 200 pixels. And so to demonstrate that, let's change this back to one column. Let me zoom out just a bit. So now you can see that the first two rows are 100 and every row after that is 200. Let me change this back to three and zoom back in. And so we can do the same thing with columns. If we defined that item five needed to be in the fifth column, then we could use grid auto columns to define those columns that are not predefined. And that'll make more sense in a bit when we get to rearranging items. So now let's talk about positioning items within its grid cell. So for horizontal positioning, we could use justify items. And we could set that to center. And so that centers each item within the cell. So to better demonstrate this, I can open the DevTools in Chrome by pressing F12. And then if I hover over the grid container, Chrome will show us our grid. So we can see now that after adding justify items, each item has now been centered horizontally within its grid cell. By default, it's stretch. Now we can set this to start. And notice that this is not flex start, it's just start. And we can set it to end. And then the default is stretch. We'll leave it at center. So to vertically position the content, we could use align items. And let's set that to center. And I'll hover over the grid here in the dev tools. And you can see that each item is centered horizontally and vertically within its grid cell. So we could also set this one to start or end. We'll leave it with at center. I'm going to turn the dev tools off. And now we can also align the entire grid within the container. All right, so let's get rid of these. So to better demonstrate that, let me change the widths of these to 150 pixels. So now you see we've got some extra space on the side. So we could use justify content and that will align the content 
horizontally within the container. And we can set that to center or start, end. So we'll change that back to center. And now to align the content vertically, we can use align content. And let's say center. And again, we can change this to start, end. These also have the space around and between and evenly. And we can do the same thing with the justify content with the space around, between, or evenly. All right, so let's get rid of these and we'll move on to the next property. And I'm going to change this back to 1FR. And now you notice that all of our items are right up against each other. There's no room in between. So we can add grid row gap. And we can set that to 20 pixels. And now we have a gap in, in between our rows. We can do the same thing with the columns. So grid column gap. And we'll set that to 20 pixels. So now we have even gaps in between our columns and rows. And of course, there's a shorthand for that, and that would be grid gap. And with grid gap, we first specify the row. So to make this apparent, we'll do 10 pixels on the row and then 20 pixels on the column. And so I'll get rid of those and save. So now you see 10 pixels between the row and 20 between the columns. And if we want the same on the rows and columns, we can just specify one value and it will add 20 pixels in between the rows and, and columns. All right, so now let's take a look at our child elements. Okay, now this is where the line numbers that we talked about earlier come in. So on each item, we can specify where we want it to lay out within the grid. So we could use grid column start, and we could say we want it to start on line one, which is all the way to the left. And then we could spe specify grid column end. Let's say that we want item one to span two grid cells. So that would be line one, two, three. So we want it to end on three. Now I'll save that, and you'll see now grid item one spans two cells and then it automatically places the other items to fit. So now let's say we want item two to span row one and row two. So here we could do the same thing with grid row start, and let's set that to one. So we want it to start on the first line of the row, which is at the very top here. And then we want it to go two rows. So that would be one, two, Three. So we want to do the same thing on that one. So grid row end uh, three. And now it kind of messes up here because we haven't specified uh, a column and it's assuming that we want to start on the first column. So we will need to specify that on item two. We'll specify grid column start and we needed to start that on the third line and then grid column end would be the fourth line. And now it looks like what we intended. Okay, now we can consolidate this code and we could just use grid column. We'll put the start value, a forward slash, and then the end value. And that would be the same as these two lines here. And we can do the same here with grid row start end and grid column start end. All right, so that's the same thing. And so now let's say we want item three to span these four cells here. All right, so let's go to item three and let's say uh, grid row. We want that to start on the one, two, the second line of the row and we want it to end, so one, 
two, three, four on the fourth line of the row. And now we'll do grid column. And we want that to start on the first line of the column. And we want it to end on column one, two, three, column line three. So we'll save that. And now what we can do here is instead of specifying the end column line number, we could actually say span two. So we want it to span two rows. And the same with this one. We want this to span two columns. And that's the same thing. Let's say we want to span three rows. And there we go. Now there is actually one more property that will consolidate this even more. And we could say grid area. We could specify the row start then column start, so it uses the start values first. So row start would be one, column start would be three. And then we have the row end, which was three, and the column end, which is four. So you just have to remember row start, column start, row end, column end. If I delete those, it remains the same. And we could do the same here. We could do grid area. And we would say row start two, column start one, row end, span three, and column end, span two. Save that, and it's the same. So now we could have elements actually overlap other elements. So let's go to item four and let's put item four to a grid area. We'll start this on the second row line and the second column line. And we will span two on the row and span two on the column. All right, so now you see that four is actually overlapping three and two. What we can also do on here is we can manipulate the Z index and we can bring item two on top of item four. So if we go up to item two, we could set a Z index and save that. And now you'll see that item two is on top of item four. So with grid, you could create a mosaic layout. All right, let me get rid of these items and we'll go back to what we initially started with. So we went through on how to align the content and align the items, but what that does is it aligns all of them the same way. So if we wanted to only align one of the grid cells and we could use justify self, let's set that to center and we could use align self and we'll set that to center. So now item two is centered horizontally and vertically within its grid cell and it will accept the start and end values as well. And of course, the shorthand for that would be place self, and we could say center, center, and you see that's the same. And we could say start, center, and so the first value here is the align property, which is the vertical, and the second value is the justify property, which is horizontal. All right, so let's take that out, go back to what we had, so I'm going to get rid of all of this for now. So there is another way that we could lay out the grid and uh, it's a little bit easier. You don't have to use the line numbers. Uh, we're actually going to name everything. And so we would use grid template areas. So what we'll first need to do for this to work is we'll need to go down to our items and we'll need to add a grid area again. And this time we're going to specify a name. So we'll just make it easy and we'll say header for item one and then we'll set a grid area and we will make this one uh, nav and then uh, grid area and make this one main and this one will be um, ads and then footer. And to make those easier to see, we'll, let's, let's add those names in the HTML as well. Okay, so we've got all of those defined. Now in our grid template areas within the container, we can now lay it out more easily. And what we'll do is actually use quotation marks 
and just type in what we want. So on the top, we're going to want the header. So we'll say header and we're defining the columns as we go. So if we want three columns, we would type header three times. And then we'll define our next row, which we will want nav, main, and then adds. And then our next row, we want the footer. And we'll need to type that three times for it to go across the entire width of the grid. All right, let's save that. So now you can see we have header, footer at the tops and bottom, nav, main, and adds. So now let's define our rows. So let's add back the grid template rows. And let's say we want the header and the footer to be much more narrow. So let's set those to 60 pixels, um, everything in between one FR and then 60 pixels. So we're setting the header row here to 60 pixels. Nav, main, and ads will be one FR. And then the footer would be 60 pixels as well. And so that looks a little bit better. So let's also define our columns. So let's add that back grid template columns. And let's say our first column, which really is the nav. Let's set that to 20%. And then the main, we'll set that to 1FR. And then the ads, let's set that to 15%. And that looks a little bit better. So you can actually lay out your website with a grid. And of course, this will be responsive. So now with CSS, there's generally shorthand for just about everything. So we can actually retype this with a different property. And we can just use grid template. Now with grid template, we can combine everything. So let's go down here and let's put our header back in. So the first thing that we're defining here is our rows. Okay, so we're going to define our rows with our area, which is the three headers. And then we will define the height of the row. So that was 60 pixels. And now we can go down and define our next row, which was the nav, main, and adds. And then the height of that was 1FR. And then we have our footer. And that was 60 pixels. And now to also add our columns to this one property, we will separate our row values from our column values by a forward slash. And now we can input our columns. And so we had those set to 20%. 1FR and 15%. So now we have combined all of this into this. So I'll go ahead and delete all of these and I'll save it. And you'll notice, of course, nothing changed. So let's just um, change these to 100 so that you can see that it is working. And there you go. So if we wanted to add an empty space for some reason, uh, we could make this four columns and let's say that we want a empty cell in between the main and the ads. We could just add a dot. And so let's now define that new column and let's define that as 50 pixels. We'll save that and now you'll see that we have a blank cell here. So I've got an added bonus here for you. I'm going to show you how to use Flexbox along with CSS Grid and how to animate your grid. So in the HTML here, uh, I've got a wrapper class and then sides, and we have two sides. So we have the robot side and the alien. Uh, then we've got the name and the emoji in each of those. And then we've got this versus class with a span. So let's go over the styles. So in the HTML, I've got uh, just some resets here. And then on the wrapper, we've got the height set to 100%. Overflow hidden, display flex, justify content, and align item center. So on the wrapper, we're using Flexbox to center the content perfectly in the center. Now on the sides, uh, we are positioning the sides relative because I need to position this versus div on top of and in the center of our grid. This video isn't intended to cover how animations work, so uh, I've got this animation set up here. 
and then we're displaying the sides as a grid. And then we're using our grid template columns and we're setting the columns to 50 of the view width each. And then we've got our custom bounds animation. And again, we're not gonna cover animations, but what we're doing is we're animating the grid gap. So we are changing the gap in between these. We're starting at 0%, we're starting at 100 view width. So that's why they are completely apart from each other because the gap is the entire view width. So let me refresh that again, you'll see the entire view width. And then the gap eventually, once we get to 100% of the animation, the gap becomes zero. All right, so then we're displaying the sides as flex, but as a column. And then we're centering the content. And we've got a font size on the robot. We've got some colors there and on the alien, some colors. Uh, but on the alien, we've got a flex direction of column reverse. So in the HTML, we have the name and then the emoji. For the alien, we also had name and then the emoji but I'm specifying column reverse, so it's swapping them. All right, and then we've just got some basic uh, CSS on the name and on the emoji, and then on the verses. Uh, like I was saying before, we needed the container to be positioned relative so that we can position the verses absolute and uh, get it aligned right in the center here. And I'm not gonna go over positioning in this video, uh, but we're positioning it in the middle and we are also displaying it as flex and aligning the content center. So we've got that versus right in the middle. And then we set our border radius to 50% uh, so that it will become a circle. And we set our colors and then we needed to do some rotation to get these colors to align perfectly on opposite sides. And that is how you use Flexbox and CSS Grid together along with a bonus animation. All right, so before you go, if you like this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. And let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you didn't understand, or if there's any other topics in CSS that you'd like me to cover. And if you think this video or any of the videos on my channel might be helpful to someone else, please share them. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. And if you haven't watched my Flexbox video, be sure to watch that one next. I'll put a link on the screen and in the description below. Thanks for watching.